Okay, hello everyone. Um, nice to meet you guys here. And thanks for dropping into this talk, which will be about the latest developments on Wheelmap Org and um, yeah, and how this has opened up um, a space for further cooperations within the field of accessibility mapping. And um, yeah, so I am Svenja, and I'm from um, from the team of the Sozialhelden, which is a non-profit organization in Berlin. And we are running the Wheelmap since 2010 as one of our main projects. And next to me. Hi, everybody. I'm Florian, uh, CTO of uh, I Will Share, which is a small startup from Paris. And we are doing uh, accessibility uh, uh, applications. Yeah, and while we are here together, you will um, get to know in the next 10 minutes. Um, it has to do with the latest development and yeah, the cooperations which has become ha has become possible from that. So, um, but first of all, um, uh, all those associations dealing with uh, accessibility, they were running into the same problems several years ago, because um, yeah, we were always wondering on um, which places um, are accessible and how we can information on that. And it, they were always hard to find, and they were not available in a in a collection where we could have an overview of, um, yeah, all those places in a city or worldwide. So, um, and for people who use a wheelchair in their daily lives, or uh, or a walking frame, or uh, move around with a strollers, um, well, this makes it pretty hard to take part in daily life. So. So the Sozialhelden came up uh, with their solution. Um, we built Wheelmap Org, and um, yeah, it is running for um, eight years now, and it works pretty fine. It's evolved, and now we've got 900,000 places which we can display in our map, and which is of course open source and open data and. Well, community-driven, um, that's also why um, it has been translated into 25 languages. And, um, and yeah, and we built a web, a web application, but also applications for iPhone and Android, which um, can be downloaded for free. So, and you see here, it's um, on the first side, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, it's a traffic light system um, to get you an idea directly as a user of which places are wheelchair accessible and which are not. Um, and um, well, of course, it is an OpenStreetMap editor. <laughs> um, that's that's uh, what's the connection here. And we are focusing on those three tags you see here. So um, it's uh, the wheelchair tag we've introduced and which gladly became accepted by the OpenStreetMap community when we started, uh, which is the wheelchair equals CS no limited. Then later on, we introduced a toilet tag uh, for wheelchairs, so toilets, wheelchair, yes, no. And um, there's um, the tag wheelchair description where you can leave further comments on the accessibility of a place. So, and as you see, it's, um, it has been widely accepted in the OpenStreetMap community. There's more than 1.3 million um, uses of the wheelchair tag so far. And um, yeah, and so it has contributed a lot for us to have those 900 places for the node types we display on Wheelmap Arc. Um, yeah, and the reason why it worked so well, um, as we see it, is that it's the criteria is pretty easy to understand for mappers. So it's focusing on one, one main thing, which is the step at the entrance and the step in the indoor facilities. So it's, um, yeah, it's something that you can examine pretty easily with just um, some minutes of time to go into the place, check up on the step, and check on the indoor um, rooms. And then um, you can add the text with just a few clicks um, and save it on Wemap Org, which will then be distributed and transferred to OpenStreetMap as well. And of course, this, the second uh, factor and why it worked so well was um, the community approach. So um, we've got, or we have, we've attracted a community which uh, is specialized, or which is a special interest group in accessibility issues. So we work together with, uh, with seniors or, which, or with wheelchair users themselves 
um, who see themselves as experts in their own issue and um, take responsibility and go out mapping their neighborhoods. Um, yes, and while we, while we were doing all this, um, of course, other associations and activists were kind of going in the same direction. And uh, for instance, there's Jacques Set in France um, with their own community, um, and they have gathered more than 100,000 places up till today. And we've got, for instance, also access maps in the USA um, with also around 100 places. And uh, well, and smaller communities like iWheelchair um, who have found their solutions as well um, to work with their community and um, get information on accessibility and places from their community as well. Um, so because all those associations were doing their things and um, having different strategies um, to collect data and crowdsource the data, um, there was one point where we thought, why don't we open up the space and collaborate um, on a larger scale with each other because it's well most important that people wherever they are and um, use a wheelchair can find places and information on access accessibility uh, no matter where they are at that point. And um, yeah, and we build a data exchange service to allow all those data sources to interact with each other, to be available and, um, and to share. And um, all of that with the, with the goal to have to increase impact and um, to raise further awareness for accessibility. And um, yeah, and what's, what's interesting is that um, when we did that, now we were going further than just uh, focusing on wheelchair accessibility. Um, right now we've got more than 150 um, different attributes describing accessibility. So also if a place is accessible for blind people or for deaf people. And um, so it's really going further on that source and those three tags I've just shown you um, we're using for wheelmap arc. Um, yes, and so this um, made it necessary for us as well to, um, to work on a new um, relaunch again for, for wheelmap.org, so that's what we're doing um, for several months now, because this new accessibility cloud um, will become um, the new backend of wheelmap, um, and this implicates some, uh, some new features and also some changes in the infrastructure we've made. So first of all, um, we are displaying now um, the sources from the accessibility cloud on wheelmap.org. So that means that also um, sources like from iWheelchair are displayed here on the map. Sorry. Um, and altogether, we've got this um, more than 1.6 million places right now. So that's much more than those 900 places um, which are displayed in wheelmap.org. And, um, and yeah, and you see, you, well here we don't have um, uh, the possibility to, to edit the source um, on the map, but rather forward uh, users to go to the, to the site of the data source where it comes from. Um, and in this it becomes clear, um, yeah, that it's, that it's a lot of sources we're working here. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's one new feature to show more sources on wheelmap.org. Um, we've also changed um, the feature on how we, do, how we deal with edits, um, which go further um, than just adding the wheelchair tags. So the wheelchair tags, um, the main three ones I've, I've shown you, they basically stay the same. They are, belong to the core product of wheelmap. Um, for adding new places or working, uh, editing um, addresses and stuff, which is much more uh, sensible in terms of um, open street map data. Um, we now forward um, people, well, we give those two possibilities. So either we, you can leave a note as a user who is not familiar with working with open street map so far, or um, if you are a mapper which has gathered um, some more experience, 
you can uh, go to the OpenStreetMap editor itself and log in and do the normal process um, which you would do as an OpenStreetMap um, mapper. Um, so that's new as well. Um, and then, which is even exceeds even a bit further um, the, the, f the feature of just showing more sources it is that we can now also display uh, real-time data. So um, we've integrated um, uh, information on escalators and elevators, um, which will, well, which would change the color when they are out of operation or in operation again. So it's, it's kind of an automatic process where uh, it switches from green to, to red um, when an elevator is not working. Um, so yeah, these are th three main features and the new ones. Um, here's again an overview on the infrastructure, um, how it looks now. So we still have um, OpenStreetMap as a, the main bucket and geodatabase um, which feeds into the WeMap backend. At the same time, you see all those other data sources uh, which feed in, it feeds into the parallel backend of Accessibility Cloud, and it all, yeah, it creates an API and then is all displayed again um, in, in WeMap as one user interface. And from that, of course, from that API, which is, can be shared and uh, used for new apps um, to, de to be developed. Okay, um, and yeah, and, um, how this all impacts on other apps, um, we will show you uh, with the example of iWheelShare, and I hand over to Florian now. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so I, I will share, uh, shares, uh, of course, the vision of Social Elden and this uh, accessibility cloud, which is more than only a map, but also comes with a stru uh, technical structure uh, to use with, the API and the repository. So here you have the re repository of uh, I will share in the accessibility cloud. We have like 2,000 places, but most of the edits, we do directly them in, in, uh, in OpenStreetMap, and uh, we use uh, it uh, through, um, through the accessibility cloud. Um, so um, what we uh, decided is to go to, um, um, to develop a tool which will fit the needs of our users, the um, disabled people. And uh, so this is a chatbot that uh, could be used directly in Facebook Messenger and very soon we'll have a web version. And um, I'll show you a bit. It's in French, but basically it's, uh, it's very simple. I'll, I'll show you, okay, let's have a try. So it just say, hello, I'm Wilson, how can I help you? And then you can pick a service. So for example, you are in a wheelchair, you, f you want to, to find toilets around you uh, that are uh, available for the, for the, for the wheelchairs. Uh, oh, and uh, we haven't seen it, but uh, very quickly you have the, the results. Um, and it, it says uh, this, uh, this data comes from the OpenStreetMap community, but it, it could also come from other sources. So mixing sources is, is the second point. Uh, so this is another service here. I'm looking for a place to stay, and I find a hotel uh, here. Comes from the OpenStreetMap community, so it comes directly. This one is from Accessible.net, which is a partner of us. This one is from Tourism and Handicap, which is a French label about tourism. Um, so you can see that uh, uh, this, the Accessibility Cloud allows us to work with a lot of partners. So Tourism and Handicap, as I said, a label, so it's uh, like f from a public institution, but we have also banks, uh, where Handisport is the French uh, sport, uh, Handisport uh, Federation, uh, and they share uh, like sport uh, places for the, for the disabled people to go. Uh, and we have also, yeah, toilets, um, tourism, leisure, uh, cinema, um, a, a lot of partners. Um, so yeah, this accessibility cloud allows us very quickly to embed the data, which w could be a uh, raw data or uh, the APIs directly, um, to work with uh, directly on a very standard, uh, standard um, um, technical uh, uh, documentation. Um, so for example, um, uh, how could I display all the cinemas for the people that um, are in, in a wheelchair? Uh, I find the, the, the places of the, of the cinemas directly in OpenStreetMap. 
And uh, in France, it wasn't that good, so we, we made a lot of edits to, to, to have the, the data better directly in OpenStreetMap. And then we have this, uh, this partner, Twavox, which is like really dedicated to um, uh, find uh, the accessibility of these places. So they have the data, and they, they don't know anything about technology, so they will not put it in OpenStreetMap. So they have the data, we just import it in, a, in, a, in, a, um, in the accessibility cloud. And the, and the last partner, it's uh, Allociné, which will be the IMDB uh, of France. Uh, and they have uh, all the, the timetables, the schedules of the, of, the, of, the, of the cinema. So we mix these three uh, sources and uh, directly uh, within the, the chatbot we have, we have the, the answer. So there is only one tool to, um, to, uh, to, uh, to have all this data, which is very convenient. Um, so it, it, it's made possible because of, um, uh, of course, open data, we, uh, so we can share the data, but also because it's standardized. So uh, this is an example uh, of how um, a toilet is, de is described uh, in, the, in the accessibility cloud. Um, so you can see that there is the, the, the height of the, the base, the, the space that is on the, on the, on, on the left side, the, the space on the right side, the space in the front. This is like very uh, detailed and you can, um, uh, as uh, uh, it has been said, there is more than 150 uh, parameters that you, you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can have. So this is um, very precise. It could be very simple but also very precise. Uh, this is another example uh, from um, um, uh, a table uh, which is in braille, which uh, there is an audio description, uh, is, it's printed in big, so this is, uh, these are the details uh, you, can, uh, you can add directly. Yeah, and um, well, what, 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 can we, what can you do now to, you know, when we can collaborate on, on such a scale with each other on accessibility data. Um, how can we how can we go even further and um, especially also in the direction of uh, the collaboration with the OpenStreetMap community and um, collecting more data and ensuring its quality. And um, there's a bunch of um, call to actions <laughs> um, I collected. So first of all. Um, yeah, let, let's talk about on, on how we can promote um, uh, the wheelchair tags within um, all mapping events we're doing or um, to bring that further in the awareness of uh, mapping events um, in general. And, um, and also, you see when, well now that, um, uh, that mapping will also comprise um, editing in, into OpenStreetMap directly on how can we bring the um, OSM, OSM expertise into, into common events um, and to find a way on, um, yeah, on, on having a concept to ensure data quality. Um, and of course, um, well now that there are so many other data sources um, which, are, which are there, which are present, to, um, how can we find a process um, to add the extra accessible data of, of those sources um, and uh, well and live data um, to add them to to OpenStreetMap as well. So um, yeah, so I don't know. Let, let's talk about this. Maybe um, we we can discuss this in the in the Q and A um, and also come to us and um, yeah and tell us your ideas on how we can do that and. Um, and yeah, of course, you can, you can have a look at um, how the new wheelmap will look like with all those new features and more data sources when you go to wheelmap.org slash beta. And I want to invite you to go there, test it, and um, yeah, just see how it works. And um, yeah, that's, that's it for now. And uh, yeah, thanks for your attention. And um, if you have any questions, very welcome to go into discussion right now. Thanks. Svenja, you said you're using data from here maps. Um, which data do you use and how do you deal with the share alike clause of the OpenStreetMap license? Um, well, so here, here maps is, is one of the sources 
and um, they've got um, they've started mapping or giving information about access accessibility as well. So and um, uh, we, we've just mentioned the harmonization of data and the attributes we're collecting in, in Accessibility Cloud as a new backend, but we're also handling licenses and kind of giving options on what kind of um, license they pick and uh, what kind of interchange they allow with all the other sources. So for us, it's, um, well, one thing is that they get displayed in, into WeMap.org and um, yeah, and then they can just, um, yeah, they, 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 they give the license on how they created it, and then, um, well, there's several uh, levels of how open the data is, and, um, well, they just choose themselves on uh, how far they want to go in this, um, in this sharing the data. So that's, that's how, well, a license model um, is also kind of part of uh, accessibility cloud here. Does, does it answer your question? <laughs> Not really. So, will points of interest um, from here maps appear in real map beside OpenStreetMap points of interest of the same category? Um, well, they. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, I can introduce um, Holger, which, who's the product manager of WheelMap.org <laughs> and uh, runs the project Accessibility Cloud as well. Hi. Yeah, so we're displaying them a separate layer. So they're completely independent. They have their own um, latitude, longitude. So they collect us the data. So from the here map creator team, one other partner is Foursquare, for example. And they allow us, so say, WheelMap to display this on WheelMap. So we're not putting this in OpenStreetMap or anything. But we also have many sources which are open, like open government data, which is compatible with ODBL. And what we make them choose in the beginning is to state explicitly, like, to, is it all rights reserved? Is it share alike? Is it CC0 or ODBL? So that others can also use the API to just get a bunch of data. So we are not in the role to share you know, data from here or from Foursquare. They're just displaying it on WheelMap. Is this more clear now? <laughs> OK. Other question? How can a user add more detailed information of an access, for example, in a park where, where you have a ramp but a very bad ground to transit to the bathroom? And how the application for the final, final user can transmit this information? So you have an access, the access is good, but you can't transit mm. in the zone. Well, this, this, this kind of information is um, not shown um, from OpenStreetMap data in WeMap.org right now. But um, what's possible is that from the other data sources we are integrated, um, that you might have seen for the iWheelchair example, that there was um, a field where a lot of text appeared. So um, whenever the community has, has gathered um, something in a text format, it will be displayed as well, um, giving some more information about it. But um, we, at the moment, what we display on, on WeMap in terms of wheelchair accessibility are just those um, three tags I've shown you. So it's, um, it's if, 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 the, if, the, if it's wheelchair, yes, no limited, the description and the uh, um, toilet information. We just have time for one last question. Thank you. Um, um, are there any other interfaces to the accessibility cloud besides the website? So is can, there can you repeat? There was just some noise. Um, yes. Um, are there any other um, interfaces to the accessibility cloud besides the website? So are there any APIs? Are there any possibilities to, for others to get data, maybe the data that is allowed to, through the well, license yeah, I mean, to use? Yeah, accessibility cloud is just, just like the infrastructure, the back end. Um, so, and WheelMap kind of is one example of how this API can work on, on the interface of WheelMap.org. Um, iWeelchair is another example where, they, where the API is used in a chatbot solution. So you can, you can grab this API um, and, uh, well, it's, it's open source code to build your own applications with that. Right, so. but the data is not, are there, is there an open API for the data? That was the question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Just first question. Um, I think 
maybe partially a comment to an uh, earlier question, if I understood it correctly. Um, I'm working on a project with the University of Washington to map sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And we're mapping sidewalks, make sure we have proper width for wheelchairs, mapping the curb cuts, mapping the crosswalks, marked, unmarked, buttons to push. Um, because just having, uh, knowing a business has wheelchair access doesn't mean you can get to it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that they've done, you know, it's really impressive, is they have a um, uh, accessmap.io where you can go in there and this is a demo for Seattle. Seattle's a very hilly city and so to, to get a wheelchair around you, you have to go around quite a ways. But it will take advantage of elevators mm -hmm. and they use the, the open hours tag in OSM. To, to allow you to say, I can use the, the elevator if the building's open. Mm -hmm. um, and the one last question, real question I have is, um, when you're working in, um, for accessibility for the blind, have you thought about screen readers for the blind for um, map tiles? Because right now when, you, when a screen reader sees a map tile, it just says map tile, map tile, map tile, map tile, map tile. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's um, in, in the beta version I've just shown you, we've, um, We've uh, really made sure that um, the app itself is, is accessible as well. So it can be used by, by screen readers. Um, uh, it can be put into audio format. So um, um, yeah, that, that's, it. that's basically it. So we've improved that a lot compared to the other application we're running so far. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Okay.